Thanks, Kate. Yeah. Hey, let's hear it for, for yeah, yeah, Margot. Kate, we're let's hear it for uh, fall break. We're not there yet. We're not there yet, as evidence you're still here. I'm, I'm thankful that you're here. Now, fall break is an interesting point in the semester because it's not quite halfway, but it serves as a marker. And for a lot of you, you might be at this point where you're thinking, wow, it's fall break. I knew I would feel more settled by fall break. I knew I'd finally have friends by fall break. I'm so thankful. Some of you are thinking, oh my gosh, it's fall break. I still don't have friends. I still feel uncomfortable. I'm still confused by this trayless system in the cafeteria. I don't know what to do. This is one thing I bet I'm, I'm just going to go with it. I think it's true for almost everybody in this room. I'm willing to bet that everybody in this room at this point, since the beginning of the semester, has at least one more Facebook friend than you did at the beginning of the semester. One more. People are like, yeah, I do. <laughs> Facebook. Now, anybody who's been with me or around me for a while, um, I, I, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with Facebook. Um, I think it's an interesting thing. And I've got a clip of something I wanna, want to show you from a TV show called Up All Night. Um, Many of you might not watch it because it's, really, it's about young parents. And so you're like, I really wouldn't relate to that. I've seen it. I'm not a young parent either. But there's some really funny stuff in it. Now, the scene I'm going to show you, um, let me set it up. It's this couple who um, have some, they just had a kid. They're the main characters. And some neighbors just moved in across the street. And these neighbors, they're perceiving these neighbors to be like the uber cool neighbors. And so they've kind of spied on them a little bit, and they're feeling a little insecure in who they are as young parents. They're feeling kind of dorky. And they look at this new couple, and they're like, oh, we want to be their friends. We want them to like us. So the new neighbor comes over and invites them over to their house and says, um, invites them to this party and is like, hey, I'll Facebook you, you know, the details. And they're like, oh, all right, cool. So the scene we're going to watch is right after the neighbor has come over and said, I'll Facebook you the details, um, and this is what happens. So take a look. That guy Tread probably thinks I'm a clown. Can't worry about that right now. Got to make sure that our Facebook pictures look good before he requests us. Okay. Wait a minute. Why do you like flare dry cleaners? They say one day, and they mean it. These guys get it you done. You also like crystal light? Soup. The news. You like the news, honey? Well, you've really got to cool it on the lights. I can't help it, all right? These thumbs up make me happy. Plus, a lot of these are ironic. No, I ironic is bad movies and malt liquor. Not J. Crew at the Grove and Lipitor. It lowers cholesterol. Oh, just fix it. Fix it. What about Juice Newton? Am I allowed to like Juice Newton? Yes, you can like Juice Newton, but you also have to like Morrissey, all right? It's about balance. Not according to your page. What? What's wrong with It's page? a wasteland. You don't like anything. Honey. I work a full-time job and I have a baby. When the hell am I on Facebook? Well, your last status update is from before Amy was born. Heading to the hospital. People probably think you died. Fine. Here we go. Back from hospital. Turned out great. Oh, look. Chris Brinkley likes this. <laughs> Makes me happy. <laughs> I saw that scene and I thought, that's a circle. And in some respects, so true, right? Because who doesn't get on Facebook? And when we get on it, we think, okay, what's my profile look like? What are people seeing? What do I, what do I like? You know? And um, when we get new friends on Facebook, we look at their profile and we look to see what do they like? What are their pictures like? Are they funny in their Facebook statuses? Um, what are people posting on their walls? And we think that we get to know people through Facebook. We think that we are making ourselves known through Facebook. And in some respects, we are. I, I mean, there's some great things about Facebook. I can keep up with friends that don't live in the same town as I do um, in ways that I couldn't. But here is, I think, one of the fundamental problems, is that we construct our identity on Facebook to be something that's not really real. I mean, nobody really puts up, you know, the terrible pictures of themselves on Facebook. Um, 
actually, some of you, just a word from your pastor, you might want to evaluate some of the pictures you have up on Facebook because people are looking at that and telling themselves a story about you because of what's up there. And that's problematic um, because it spills over into our thinking about our relationships with people. We think that we can figure people out simply from a list of thumbs up and likes and interests. And we judge people on whether or not we will like them. You know, we don't go on Facebook looking for people who have drastically different likes than us. You know, we look for people who like the same things as we do. Oh, we're so much alike. You know, we're going to be great friends. Um, and we, we, we cast this image of what we are. And I think the root of it is that we want to be known. We want to be known and belong to something. Now, last Sunday, if you were in the gathering, Trigg talked about um, God in Christ, this mysterious person who is fully God and fully human. And we hear in the Gospel of John that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. And what has come into him, being through him is life. And the life was the light of all people. And then a little later it goes on to say this, the Word became flesh and lived among us. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, okay, well, what's the connection between Jesus and Facebook? It's not as simply, you know, what would Jesus do? Would Jesus have a Facebook page? Um, ironically enough, maybe you knew this, Jesus does have a Facebook page. Don't ask me how, but he does. Over three million people like him. So um, that's not the point, though. The point is this. I think what we begin to learn to do with people and how we relate to people and size people up and put people in a box, in a profile, we have the tendency to do the same thing with God. We think that we can um, figure God out, that we know exactly what God likes and dislikes. But if there's anything that we learn from the life of Christ— is that it's mysterious and that Christ is flipping things around all the time. That Christ is rooting us in a new way of being, in a new identity. That in Christ we do belong. And here's, I think, the second thing that we get through Christ. And I love the way Eugene Peterson says it in the message. The Word put on flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. You see, we long to be a part of something. We long to be a part of a community. And in some respects, Facebook seems like it's making that easier, but I think in a lot of respects, it's making it harder for us. It's making, us hard, it's making it harder to do the real work of having real-life relationships, because people are more complex and harder to deal with in real life than they are on a Facebook page. But God calls us to be in relationship with one another, and that's something we see in the coming of Christ, that God so loved this world that he walked on it, that he ushered a new way of being that he has reconciled us to him into all things. And so the challenge for us, for those of us who want to give witness to the life of Christ, is to think of how are we living in our neighborhoods? How are we living and dwelling with one another? Are we taking time to listen to one another? Are we taking time to be real and vulnerable to one another? Are we simply looking for people who like the same things that we like? Or are we living into the gift that we have as the diverse body of Christ? We're about halfway through the semester. 
Some of you have hit new patterns and new rhythms. My challenge for us, I think God's challenge for us as a community of believers is to continue to expand our relationship circles, not just on Facebook, but in real life. So this weekend, as you head into fall break and as you come back, be mindful that it's never too late to have deeper relationships, to meet new people. You can go back to the beginning of the year when it seemed socially appropriate to say hello to everybody. Do it again. You know, meet new people. And we do so not just to be nice and to be a nice community, because we, but because we believe that what, that is what God has called us to be and God has shown us how to do through the person of Christ. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the gift of relationships. We thank you for the gift um, of your son. We thank you for the gift that we are called your children, that we are rooted in you and in your love. God, help us to live into that. Show us how to do it and put people in our lives um, that help us to do this as well. And God, as we go into this weekend of break, we thank you for rest and space and time. Be present with us. And we pray this all through Christ. Amen. Go in peace and enjoy your break. <laughs>